Welcome to a brand new show. This is the next innings. Everything about Sri Lankan cricket with me, your host, Samir Yunus. We are going to be discussing, starting off with obviously that loss to India in the T20 series. 3 0 was the loss. Become used to losses now. However, as we always do, we look for positives in every series, hoping that the next time we get onto the field in the next innings, as this show says, we get better and better as we're building up to that T20 World Cup in October. And of course, there's a lot of cricket coming up in this year, 2022, for Sri Lanka. Lots of home tours, lots of away tours. So we've got a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to discuss. Sri Lanka, obviously, being known uh, for its cricket and everybody loves the game and that's why it doesn't matter how good or bad the performances are, there's always something to talk about when it comes to cricket. To do that with me, of course, for the first time on this show, uh, joining me is uh, former Sri Lanka under-19, Harun Maujur, who's also a cricket commentator. How have you been, Harun? All good? Fine, thank you. What about you, Samir? Keep very well. good, very good. Welcome to this brand new show. I know we've spoken before, obviously. Yes. But uh, here, new program, next innings. The last time we spoke about the India series, we thought it might be a 2-1 because of all the positives we got from Australia. But unfortunately, a, another below par performance for Sri Lanka. What did you make of it? Yeah, I would argue, uh, ex you can always argue of the fact that someone can say it's a uh, series to forget, but you know, there were quite a bit of positives that we saw, mm. especially from a batting point of view. If you remember our last discussion, yes. we had contradictory remarks in terms of the performances, yes, in terms yes. of bowling and batting, but in this series, uh, we're talking about Patom Nisankar's and Dasun Shanaka's performance, simply exemplary in terms mm. of how they you know, put their hands up, uh, especially in tough conditions. Dharamsala was not easy, the ball was moving a lot. Pitch uh, was very conducive for seam bowling. Uh, that's those were the two main positives that I saw. Bowlers, you know, without those eight overs, we really, you know, found it very hard to contain India. The eight I'm talking about is one in those and the as you mm -hmm. know, those eight overs could have really helped the team to kind of put the brakes mm -hmm. uh, in those round scoring. So I think that's where we really missed out. Fielding surprising with Bilopa, but I think we saw the same with the Indian team as well. Yes. They too yes. struggled in those conditions. Uh, all in all. Yes, you can, you can say that it's a series to forget, but you know, like we've always done in the past. <laughs> positives. Taking the positives uh, from the tour. Always talking about positives. You know, you mentioned the fact that fielding had been below par and that the main positive was obviously Patum Nisanka and Dasun Shanaka being getting among the runs. Dasun Shanaka especially, because there were question marks being asked about his inclusion in the team. Is he just there being a captain or does he even contribute with the batter? Now I think he silenced his critics quite well. We hope that he can hang on to that form and, you know, for a long time to come. But uh, it's unfortunate that whenever we see a few boxes being ticked, this is something I tweeted as well, we don't tick all the boxes together. So when one person who is not in form starts performing, the others let them down. And that's what happened in India, I think. We, uh, even with the batters, the two guys were performing, but there was no one else to hang on and you know contribute even a little bit extra. Uh, Asalanka, Chamika Karuna, Ratna, Chandimal, disappointing from them, under par performance. You would expect guys like them to be better. Agree, agree. I think especially looking at it from a 20 over perspective, that mm. 7th to 14th mm. has been a real struggle for Sri Lanka. Yes. The first six was a struggle for both teams. Mm. If you if you looked at the series, yeah. the power plays were a bit difficult, but that 7 to 15, 14 is which differentiated India with Sri Lanka, True. where we really, you know, were, you know, tightened in terms of the screws. We couldn't score runs. We lost wickets. Mm. At most games, we were five down. You know, basically with next to nothing. Yes. So, below par performances in terms of expectations, especially when you mentioned Chandimal, Chamika, Asalanka also. Mm. Uh, so yeah, sad situation. <laughs> it's just that, like you said. We haven't jailed as a team if you can uh, take all the facets yes, in yes. the game, batting, bowling and fielding. I think once that comes in is when you will see consistent mm. victories. But till then, you know, we'll just have to be taking the positives uh, as in when it comes. But it's a good team, Samir. Mm. It's not to say that this team is bad. Uh, we are competing. Exactly. We used to get rolled over last year exactly. and before that, but at least yeah. now we are competing. Yeah, I think the, the, the critical thing here is about building that bench strength. Mm. So you see how India can just bring player after player and still put out dominant performances. Yeah, this Shreya you know, Sire who was racking up runs against us doesn't find a place in the team sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. So you see how important it is to have that bench strength. Yes, mm. we have a uh, super 11. That crack mm. 11 is there. But what happens now? We really saw it uh, from a bowling point of view. Yes. No one Hindu, no Tikshana. The struggle. impact was really severe. Mm. So likewise, it's very important that we start uh, building on that phase. Yes, the current crop is very good. but. Mm. 
it, all, it, it has to be a sustainable uh, growth in yes. terms of performance. Now let's hope like, we find decent replacements uh, in case of injuries and like he said, you know, COVID-19 and whatnot these days. So you always need to have that bench strength in order to be able to field a very competing 11 every time you go out. We've been playing a lot of T20 cricket recently. I mean, I can't remember the last time we played a test match. It's been so long, but the good news is the longest format, the purest format is coming back, Harun. I'm sure you are one of the advocates of uh, the longer Absolutely. format of the game. <laughs> um, uh, in Mohali, Sri Lanka take on a very, very difficult opposition because playing India and India is always tough, whatever the format, but test is, is the true test. And honestly speaking, at least from what I see, I think for Sri Lanka, Test format has been the most consistent. We've been doing decently well over there. We've got guys like Dimoth who are among the top run scorers, among the best batsmen in the world right now. Lahiru Tirman is in good form. And the squad has been announced. There are a few um, question marks as to who will bat where. But just an overview of the squad, you think we've got what it takes to give India a tough time? Yes, I think if you ask me about the best red ball players that we have, I think the majority of them are in this squad. All right. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very well composed, like you said, uh, in terms of positioning, uh, in terms of where batsmen are going to bat is going mm. to be a bit of a challenge because mm. most of them are top heavy yes. who have in their domestic sides played in the top four. Mm. So with how they would kind of you know find a place at number six, seven, eight mm. is going to be very interesting to see. Uh, this one disappointment in not seeing Roshan Silva in that particular squad, one of the best red ball players. And he's been racking up the runs in the domestic cricket. Exactly. Yeah. And of cricketer, I, I would say, pretty much unfortunate to be born in this mm. country but <laughs> amidst all the runs he's got mm. uh, he's just not been able to find a consistent yeah, and the last time i remember if he played if i remember well when we played india he was among the runs and he was someone who rescued us but i think at least a couple of years ago i was in delhi when delhi. he played a really good knock yes. and you know saved us uh, a test match anyway what's gone is gone this is a squad that's out there let's talk about the positions now that you were saying that you know we don't know where and what will happen because now we have a dilemma at the top we've got lahiru tirumanna who's back after his personal break that he took but we we also have the young Pratum Nisanka who is in good form these days. So, Dimut Karnaratna, obviously open choice, being the captain. Who are you going to bat him with? Is it going to be the young Pratum or the more senior statesman Lahiri Tirman? Or do you have space for both of them in the team? I would have space for both of them, okay. but in terms of batting lineup, considering the match, uh, what you call involvement and mm. the game time that they have had, mm. irrespective of the form, mm. I would go with Dimut and Pratum to open the innings, okay. with Tiriman to be batting at number three. Right. So then, you know, the rest would continue. I'm assuming that Chandimal will find a place in this squad. Okay. You know, taking in the record, he has playing red ball, Matthews and Dhananj to follow through. Then you will have uh, uh, another extra batsman mm. can play in Probably this Probably Asalanka, Asalanka or Dikwala. Mm. Asalanka is what I'm guessing, mm. who will kind of make it into the side. And the five bowlers, I'm looking at a three two combination, that's okay. three pace and two spin. Okay. So you're saying Chandimal will be the wicket keeper for this series, no problem? That's what my gut says. You <laughs> never know what selection right. was. Because honestly speaking, Dick Weller hasn't done too badly. He's always been good for Sri Lanka in test, but obviously disciplinary issues and whatnot. He comes back after a ban, so we don't know if he'll immediately get into the 11 or will he be given some more time to be in the bench. And Chandimal, obviously, everyone knows that he's always been a good test player, but does he still have it? Because we've, all, we've seen recently he's been doing well domestically at least in, in limited overs but obviously he's been a disappointment uh, at the international level in white ball cricket so it'll be an interesting tussle to see who gets those gloves is it Chandimal or is it uh, Dick Weller who scores runs and scores them fast which is something the modern test game requires uh, you talked you talked about the five bowlers how's your combination your two fast bowlers are Suranga Lakmal and who else I'm looking at, especially with Rohit Sharma being the captain and all this hype you know, yes. built around Rohit Sharma. I'm, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer that Dushmanta might get a goal. Right. I would like to see Vishwa uh, also playing. You never know whether they might go with a 3-2 uh, uh, combination, whether they'll play three fast bowlers mm. and two spinners, mm. with Dhananjay being the additional bowler as a sixth yeah. uh, bowler who will come and bowl in off-spin. But that would be the three that I would be looking at. Vishwa, okay. Dushmanta and Suranga, maybe playing both uh, Ambuldeni and... The two left-armers. Yeah, Javikram. Javikram. And then you also have Dhananjaya De Silva, who yes. has also been in some very good form. He can slot in, bats, bats very well, one of my favourite batsmen to watch, honestly. And then he also brings in that off-spin element. So, you've got a versatile player in him. Um, again, very difficult opposition we're talking about. Virat Kohli's 100th test match, so very special location for Indian cricket anyway in Mohali. They'll have extra motivation to try and win exactly. that. Either way, having said all of that, do we stand a chance and if so, what's your prediction? 
Oh, <laughs> very tough. Sorry, I know I always ask this tough question from you, but then that's the point because of the show. Because why I say <laughs> when you play India and India, if you li- if you take the past, even mm. with all the superstars, yes. we've always crashed. You mm. know, we've never never been able to dominate India in India. Mm. Uh, so with this current crop, if there was only a chance, yeah, it would only be the red ball side, the test side exactly. that would give some kind of a fight. Mm. Uh, but given the fact that you have the Kohli's and all coming back, the Shami's and everyone, you know, getting... Now Chandra and Ashwin, one of Ashwin, the best spin yeah. bowlers so in it's, home conditions. Uh, it's actually going to be a very tough ask for uh, Sri Lanka. Mm. If they bat well, I believe maybe a 1-0, okay. maybe one game going draw, but uh, <laughs> okay. otherwise it's going to be... A very, very tough series for Sri Lanka. A very pessimistic <laughs> Harun Maujud here telling us that we might lose one nil and not two nil. <laughs> right, we hope that Sri Lanka does do well in the test format at least because as we said, India has extra motivation to try and win it. And their bowlers have been doing very well, not just at home, but even in away conditions. Conditions foreign to them. You get guys like Mohamed Siraj, Mohamed Shami, and then you have Bumra, all superstar bowlers. So it will be a real challenge for the Sri Lankan batters. Can they live up to it is what we are very to find out. The first test starts on Friday in Mohali. Remember, it's Virat Kohli's 100th test. I can't keep saying it more because Virat Kohli, as we know, is an absolute superstar batter for India. He's been he's been just amazing for them. And it'll be a very great occasion for Indian cricket. Can we spoil their party or not? Is the question that remains to be answered. We'll try and find out uh, when we come back next time on the next innings. See you next time. <laughs>